Okay, so let's talk about functions. So a function is a way for you to reuse some of the code that you write. So you don't have to rewrite the code over and over and over. So in order to create a function, you give it a function keyword, a name, pair parentheses, and a pair brackets. And then inside of the brackets, you put your code. And this code is the code that's going to run when you call the function, like you do down here. So if I now copy paste this code, and I go to my browser, paste that in, and I hit enter, you can see that it logged out that string. You can ignore the undefined for now, because that's a browser specific thing, and it doesn't have anything to do with our function. Now, there are w several ways that you can create a function. This is just one way. Here's another. So you can see that here we have a variable, some function name, and we give it an anonymous function, which is just a fancy way of saying a function that doesn't have a name. And it does the same thing. It logs out something, and this is how you call it. Now, you can also give function input parameters. and Input parameters are extremely useful. So you give it a greeting and a name, and it's going to log out the greeting, a space, and the name. And this is how you use it. So I say hi and Frederick, and this will log out hi space Frederick. So this is a basic example of how you use functions. Please get really comfortable using them because they are extremely powerful and you're going to use them almost every single day. So functions can actually return values. So I give this add function an input of a and b. I add them together and then I use the return keyword and that's going to return the sum of these two values. As you can see calling it will return 2 if the input is 1 and 1. It's because 1 and 1 is 2. And you can actually do pretty much anything. You have a subtract function, a and b, subtract them. Well, you give it 1 and 1, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, and it's going to return 0. And this works for multiplication as well. However, this is a bit of an, a special example. If you look at this function, multiply, it takes an a and a b, and then it does a return a times b, and then it has a log function. Now, this won't work because the return, this word, means to JavaScript that you are now ready to stop the execution of what's ever inside this function. In essence, it means that the return is always the last thing in a function and anything below it will actually not run. So if I call multiply with 1 and 1, it's going to return 1 but the console log will never get executed. So keep that in mind. Whenever you're using return inside of a function, it's going to be the last thing that happens. Okay, so let's talk about constructors. So a constructor is just a special type of function that's going to return an object. And the way you know it's a constructor is by adding a capital letter to the function name. And the rule is that if your function name starts with a lowercase letter, it's a regular function, otherwise it's a constructor. Now, this is one way to make a constructor. So here I created a private variable. and this variable will not be accessible on the return object. This is a public variable and it's going to be accessible. This is a public function which is also going to be accessible. However, this meow function here will not be accessible. And the freaky thing is that if you create a public function like this and call a private function from inside, that's going to work because this function can find this function. So when we now have our object like this, new dog, and you give it the input, we get a dog, and we do dog.name, that's a public variable, so I can get that value. But the private variable, well, no, that's undefined, because I can, and I can't get to it. So secret bar, that's public, which lets me get it and call it. However, the meow function, which was private, is going to cause an error, because I can't access it. So the next way you can create a constructor is through this method here. So you simply return an object, you put some data on it, add your function, and you create it in the exact same way. 
And those are the two ways you preferably will use to create a constructor.